Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is May 13th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, breaking news from Fort Bragg as U.S. Special Forces are training with cops for house-to-house -house raids. Then, a scientist at MIT uncovers a link between glyphosate, GMOs, and the epidemic of autism. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But yeah. Not not really, but Dangerous, I know, right? I know people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and no, fail no, fairly regularly. Let's... Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So you're ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Oh, yes, you are. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. If you're like most Americans, you don't exactly enjoy paying your funds to the privately run Federal Reserve that's devaluing your currency with quantitative easing. But what if they were taking more out of your check than even they had somewhat of a, I don't want to say a right, but somewhat of a reason to attack? And let's say that sum was around $100,000 and you're a small business owner in North Carolina. Well, this is what actually happened to Lyndon McClellan. And it says, although McClellan did not break the law or was he charged with a crime, the IRS and Department of Justice seized his money. Following a front page story in the New York Times, the IRS announced it will no longer pursue the seizure and forfeiture of funds associated solely with legit source structuring cases. Well, that makes me feel a whole lot better that they don't want to do it now that's in the New York Times and they have a big front page story to make them feel bad about themselves. And it makes me wonder, you know, because a lot of times things will go on for a long time before they make the news. And then once they get caught, it's like, oh, well, we didn't really mean to do that. We just we're going to keep all the money that we seize. But. Uh, hopefully we can get some help for this gentleman and uh, they'll give him his money back and we can get rid of this stuff. These uh, civil forfeitures, you know, a lot of times you can be driving down the road and if you encounter an officer in certain states, if you have a lot of money, let's say you have $10,000 cash well, for whatever reason, one at the bingo hall, whatever. You get pulled over, you have the cash in the car, the officer can seize your, your funds and say, hey, Mr. Smith, I think you're running an illegal drug activity. And he's like, I just, I just won this at the bingo hall, so it doesn't matter. We're going to take your money. And if you ever do get it back, it's probably going to be years and you've got to spend thousands of the, those uh, lottery winnings or whatever to get your money back. It's very unfortunate. And this is the type of mentally ill society that we now live in. And speaking of the mentally ill, let's talk about the mentally ill in some prison facilities, because I used to work at a county jail and a lot of times they would bring in mentally ill patients. And the thing about that was, is you'd have a guy who was maybe at a gas station or whatever doing some type of strange activity, they encounter the guy, they take him to jail because they really don't have any place else to put him. And a lot of people who say we should have mentally ill facilities to you know, house these type of people, those are, facilities are very, very expensive. So a lot of times they'll put them in a prison or in a county jail and just hope for the best, even though those are not the places for these people because they need a doctor, not a guard. And now we have the article, mentally ill inmates abused in 5,000 US detention centers. And it says Human Rights Watch has issued a report stating that mentally ill prisoners are being abused in deten detention facilities across the U.S. and that these practices are happening in over 5,000 facilities. And there's a tweet there from the Human Rights Watch. It's very unfortunate indeed, but, you know, these are the things that happen. And we just talking about it isn't going to make it any better. You know, we need some type of place to take these people if they need help. And, you know, these homes, even where they go, are, like I said, are very expensive having some type of handler to help them throughout their day-to-day -day lives is very uh, expensive, especially if it's somebody who need this, needed this treatment since uh, they were very young. And we'll move on now talking about glyphosates. And first, before we go to this clip, I want to, before we go to ARC, I want to run this clip of this gentleman who was a candidate for the glyphosate lobby, so to speak. And he's saying, hey, there's nothing wrong with glyphosates. And guys, well, I got some glyphosate, so I'm not going to drink that. Let's go to this clip, and then we'll take a look at the article. It's, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, okay, so you... you, you no, but I know... So that, it's dangerous, I right? Know, I know people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and but, fail no, let's, fairly let's regularly. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. To, no, it's no. not. So you're ready to drink one glass of glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Interview me about golden rice. That's did, what I'm talking did, about. Okay, then it's except, finished. Except, except, then the interview is finished. That's a, that's a good way to solve things. Yeah. 
So as you saw in the clip, if it's so healthy, you know, I got a big tall glass right here. Why don't you drink it? No, that, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to kill myself. But it's not just deadly to your overall ultimate health. Now there's a study coming out of MIT saying that glyphosate could be linked, as well with other things, to autism. It says autism affects as many as 1 in 68 children born in the United States, according to the CDC, up from 1 in 150 at the turn of the century. And it says nobody knows exactly why it's happening, but many people are pointing the finger at the glyphosates and the GMOs and saying that it could be uh, used in the same things we see in Roundup. So if you spray your yard with Roundup, they're saying it could increase the risk for autism. And I just had a chance, I was uh, talking to somebody one time out at a protest at a rally, and she was asking me about you know vaccines and GMOs and glyphosate, and I'm not an expert on any topic, but I could say, you know, it's a cocktail of these things. I don't think it's as simple as you take a shot and you get autism or you uh, encounter glyphosate and you get autism. But when you have such a large concentration of this stuff over the course of many years, it does, you know, the studies do show that it does have some type of an effect. And you contrast this with maybe a Amish community. They have very low numbers of autism. And there's that uh, senator or congressman who was talking on Capitol Hill saying that they didn't really have autism in Africa until, until people in the U.S. started to go over there with vaccinations. So, I mean, I think it's at least something worth looking at. It may not have the definitive, definitive finger like, yes, it's this one thing, but I think we should at least look at this stuff to make sure that these type of incidents don't happen to anybody in the future. And talking about future incidents, we've talked a lot about Jade Helm here on the show, and you guys can go look at all those very numerous <laughs> reports uh, we put out about that. And we also saw the uh, eclipse down in Florida. They're running drills in Fort Lauderdale and Miami and all over the place. And now we have a new one. Special forces train with cops for house-to-house -house raids. And this is out of Fort Bragg, or I guess right outside Fort Bragg in Richland County, South Carolina. And the, the police were teaming up with the military to do house-to-house -house drills, uh, saying it's for domestic law enforcement. And the late-night pre-dawn drills and exercises which involved the 3rd Special Forces Group out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, have been running since May 5th and will conclude on Friday. And you wonder, what are these guys training for? And that's always the deal. And I've said publicly here before many times that if you want to talk about, you know, a potential takeover drill, Jade Helm probably isn't the best interpretation of that. But you can talk about them running drills in Miami, Florida. What cave in Afghanistan looks like Miami, Florida? Same thing with they running drills out in San Diego when we were running hot and heavy in Iraq and Afghanistan. What are you guys going to do that for? But now we see the military training with the police for this particular operation. And just like when we were talking about with Jade Helm, we had the, uh, the piece we put out last week where we were comparing and contrasting the uh, lieutenant colonel and also Meade. And they were saying, well, no police are going to be involved in this drill. Or the lieutenant colonel said, and then you cut to Meade. He's like, yeah, we're going to have the police stopping our guys and seeing what they're doing. And the lieutenant colonel says, well, the role players, they're going to all be military. Then you cut to a clip of Meade. He said, yeah, we're going to get people from the community to come out here and run the drills with us. It's just uh, <laughs> they can't seem to get their story straight, regardless of what Jade Helm is. You know, it, it's just they keep lying to the public, or at least they can't e get the story straight on their end. So how exactly are we supposed to understand it when they can't understand what each other are saying? And then they want to come out and attack you and say that you don't go to their meetings, and even though you try to go to the meetings. For the people who don't know that story, they invited Alex to come on, I believe it was ABC. And he said, yeah, I'll come on there and do a live interview. They say, great, Mr. Jones. And then they say, we want to do a taped interview. He said, I'm not doing a taped interview because you guys can creative, creatively edit the report and make me say anything that you want me to say. I'm not going to do that. And then like 10 minutes before the interview is supposed to kick off, they stop by and say, hey, Mr. Jones, we're here to pick you up. He's like, the studio's more than 10 minutes away. I'm going to miss the interview. And then they come out and say, well, he was, he was too much of a coward to come on the show. Then you got the, you know, uh, people at Fox News trying to say that he backed out of the interview. And hey, Fox News, uh, ABC, whoever wants to get in on this Jade Helm action, Alex Jones has issued a open invitation. You can come down here to Austin, Texas, or he'll even come to you wherever you are and debate you live on air about Jade Helm. I'm sure you guys don't want to talk about that. You just want to read off your teleprompters and not have any type of real debate with facts or information. All right, let's move on to this. You know, let's talk about some very important, I guess in our common parlance, we'll call it domestic terrorism. Because we talk about the FBI being involved in this. We talk about the Justice Department being involved in this. 
And no, I'm not talking about homegrown extremists, people who want to link up with Al Qaeda or people who want to blow up federal buildings. The FBI, the Justice Department, and also the FCC have linked arms in a unified front to combat Louie Louie, old time, good old fashioned swing music. But hey, you know, I guess these guys are domestic terrorists just along with everybody else because the FBI is leading an investigation into the song Louie Louie, and they did this because of so-called controversial lyrics. And anybody who's ever heard the song Louie Louie, it doesn't seem very uh, provocative to me, but I guess some people thought it was. And then the FBI, FCC, and all these other groups, they did a search and said, we have to track down these lyrics. They spent two years looking for these lyrics and then realized, like, oh, yeah, I guess these things are in the copyright office. I mean, yeah, these are your tax dollars at work. You know, let's not worry about, you know, funding uh, Al-Qaeda or dropping the air grenades to, uh, to ISIS or running guns into Mexico. Let's not investigate any of that. Or, you know, 1993 World Trade Center bombing where they had, uh, the FBI had the Patsy cook the bomb. Let's not talk about any of that. Let's go investigate Louie Louie. So these are your tax dollars hard at work and what they're doing to keep you safe. And we'll end our segment tonight with this before we go into more special reports. New UK law could criminalize politically incorrect opinions. So basically, uh, over there in the UK, this is a good example to show to people who say, I'm not a criminal because I'm not breaking the law. This is a perfect example to show you that they can instantly change the laws to make anything you do, no matter how benign, a criminal activity. So we'll go out to break with this and come back with more special reports. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Jakari Jackson, and we'll be back right after this. This is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. We have a new article on the site today. New UK law could criminalize politically incorrect opinions. And this is the British Prime Minister David Cameron. And he's saying that if you have a view that I guess the state or the populace at large don't like, you could be potentially labeled a criminal. And this also speaks to all the people who say, well, I'm not doing anything illegal, so I have nothing to hide. Well, you don't make the laws. <laughs> Keep that in mind. You say you're not a criminal. They can make laws at any time that make your activity, even the most benign activity, criminal behavior. And the London Independent quoted uh, Mr. Cameron, and they said, it's the creepiest thing David Cameron has ever said. And Mr. Cameron said this, for too long, we have been a passively tolerant society saying to our citizens, as long as you obey the laws, we will leave you alone. And he ended the quote by saying, this government will conclusively turn the page on this failed approach. And that reminds me of that scene, if you guys ever seen that movie Network. Please at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel belted radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. And that's what Mr. Cameron is doing exactly here. He's saying, I'm not going to leave you alone until you completely get in with what's politically correct in the society. And to talk about political correctness, we all know the recent shooting in Garland, or Garland, excuse me, Garland, Texas. And uh, it was an attack, and many people in the media were, I wouldn't say supportive of, but they didn't condemn the action of the attackers. It was more or less blame the victim type of deal. You know, in talking about this blaming the victim, because we always hear the stories, you know, unfortunately, you know, somebody will be sexually harassed or raped. There's no excuse to rape somebody regardless of what they have on. You blame the person who did the attack. But in this Garland, Texas deal, they were saying, yes, they pretty much brought it upon themselves because they had this very provocative event where they were encouraging people to draw the Prophet Muhammad. Now, personally, I wouldn't do something like that, but I don't think that people should be executed because of that. Same thing in Charlie Hebdo. I may not do those actions myself as far as drawing the cartoons, but I don't think those guys have a right to go in there and just blow your head off because they disagree with your point of view. Just keep that in mind. If you are one of these people who always say you have nothing to fear because you're not breaking the law, they could pass a law at any time that makes you a criminal. You can find more reports on Infowars.com.
The Amtrak Northeast Regional Train 188 flew off the rails, traveling at 107 miles per hour on its way to New York. The train was carrying 238 passengers and five crew members and derailed in the Port Richmond neighborhood of Philadelphia. Philadelphia Mayor Nutter said of the Level 3 mass casualty event, Never seen anything like this uh, in my life. The horrific wreck that mangled the front of the train and tore seven train cars apart has so far claimed the lives of seven people. Seven others are fighting to stay alive and at least 200 were injured. This is the ninth derailment for Amtrak this year. The train was traveling on the Northeast Corridor. Amtrak can operate these inner city services at speeds as high as 125 miles per hour. Of course, speeds like this are aimed at the transit system's bottom line, not the safety of the passengers. Probably 95% of the time, when you hear about passenger derailments or regular trains that are carrying freight crashing, they haven't updated in about 50, 60 years the rail beds in this country. You used to, when my dad was a child and his mother was getting her master's degree in Houston, my grandmother, they would get on the train in Teague, Texas. They'd drop her off in the morning and it would bullet train at over about 105 miles an hour. This is like in 1955, my dad's about five years old, to Houston. On that very same stretch of line, you can't make freight go over 45 miles an hour on that very railroad today. 105 miles an hour was the safe speed in 1955. Now you can't go half that, basically. That's why the trains are flying off the tracks. They are pieces of junk. When you're on New York subways and they're flying around and it's jumping up and down, it's rotting, but nothing compared to the general rail lines. The railroads are basically the worst in the world. Mexican trains get up to 75 miles an hour and they've got bad railroads. Back in 2005, the same man that blew the whistle on Cheney's orders on 9-11. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, um, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Secretary of Transportation Norman Mineta of the Bush administration warned that the rail system today is an antique, adding today's system is basically a 1950s style model. Mineta recommended that most of the Amtrak's rehabilitation funding come from the states in a nonpartisan manner. The Obama administration would have the funds come from the imagined infinite wellspring of federal taxpayer dollars so that friends like Rahm Emanuel can reap the benefits of yet another slush fund. Sarah Feinberg, acting administrator of the Federal Railroad Administration, was appointed on January 9, 2015. From 2009 to 2010, she served in the Obama administration as special assistant to the president and senior advisor to the White House Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel. Her actions in the coming weeks should be carefully scrutinized as Obama rolls forward on this. Amtrak has been hemorrhaging money. As of 2012, Amtrak has been subsidized by the federal government for $1 billion per year and loses $600 million per year on its longer routes. The derailed train was on one of its profitable short routes, putting lives in danger to try to balance the returns. Meanwhile, the DHS, the DEA, and TSA prey on train passengers risking their lives on a decrepit transportation system rife with corruption. A young man with a dream to make it big in the music business says he saved up $16,000 in cash and hopped on an Amtrak train from Michigan in hopes of getting to Los Angeles. Agents from the Drug Enforcement Administration boarded the train, asked to look through his luggage, and ended up taking his cash, all $16,000 of it. They didn't give him a reason. They didn't say anything was suspicious. John Bound, Infowars.com. Jakari Jackson here for InfoWars.com. Got a new article for you guys today talking about gun grabbers, but this is a little different spin. Today we're going to talk about guys who don't want you to have guns and vote to take your guns away while they not only own guns, but use them for illegal purposes. Case in point, this is Senator Virgil K. Smith out of Michigan, and he's under arrest for allegedly shooting his girlfriend's car with a shotgun. And... Uh, update to the article has been out and it says now he has been charged with domestic violence and shooting the incident with his ex-wife and he has been removed from committees and relieved of his caucus duties and this is just one guy of course you guys probably recall him 
Mr. Yi, Senator Yi, out of California, and he was running guns, and uh, but of course he wanted to take your guns away while he's involved in illegal activities. But it's not always uh, criminal activities these guys are up to. Of course, we know about Mayor Bloomberg. He has an armed security force, but if you want to own a gun, he has a problem with that. Let's go ahead and watch this clip. Mayor Bloomberg, how are you doing? Jason, I go to Brooklyn. Okay. In the spirit of gun control, will you disarm your entire security team? Uh, you will get right back to you. You'll get back to me? Would you like a sip of my soda? There's a little glitchy there, but you guys get the point. Basically, this journalist confronts Mayor Bloomberg, who is a very strong anti-gun proponent. Says, hey, will you uh, get rid of all these guys with guns? He's like, oh, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. And it's not just there. You guys probably recognize her, Madam Feinstein, and let's listen to what she had to say. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. Because she did not have the votes, and of course, she did have a concealed carry, but she doesn't want you to have one. And, you know, we've seen guys uh, like a lot of the talk show pundits, they have armed security that will respond to their homes if there's some type of incident. And we'll end with this. Our, I guess, officially gone attorney general has been replaced. And an interesting thing about Eric Holder, if you guys recall, he was supposed to retire all last year, and he, they kept pushing it back, kept pushing it back. And I guess they found the best time to do it was during the Baltimore incidents. The stuff was going on out there, and I guess continuing to go on uh, as far as the court case. But he was supposed to retire last year, but they pushed it back. So now when they have the new lady in, and hopefully she'll be much better and uh, do a much better job. But now if you want to criticize the Justice Department, if you want to talk about Fast and Furious or about this clip, we're about to show you here. Well, all that, that's Eric Holder, that's under a different guy, so you can't blame the Justice Department anymore. And hopefully she will be a breath of fresh air, but uh, well, I'll just have to wait and see, but I'll end tonight with this, and you guys can find more reports on Infowars.com. Part of every day, some kind of anti-violence, anti-gun message. Every day, every school, at every level. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there on prisonplanet.tv. It supports our broadcast and gives you a first-hand look at the great information. And also go to YouTube, check out the Alex Jones channel. You can subscribe. We have over a million subscriptions right now, so you can be one of the many people. You will be in good company with other great patriots. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we will see you again tomorrow night. So see, they're lying to us, their own, their own Jade Helm handout says the things we've said, and then they tell the media it doesn't exist. Are you going to use our local people to help with that? So we're not training any type of law enforcement <clears throat> during this training exercise. It's not happening. The only coordination now that will take place is we're just letting them know, hey, here's what happened the last 24 hours. Here's what's happening the next 24 hours. Because there are times um, where we ask at times, the uh, law enforcement folks to do a traffic stop for us, to check our guys, to see why they're doing what they're doing, when they're doing it, and why they're doing it. Then they came to Austin, and Bastrop and said none of this was true, and they never said it, and laughed at us. Sh should we play the clip? We've got that cut out, right? Now, we're talking about role players, and you mentioned the role players. I'm curious as to how you guys came about these role players. As far as the role players go, they are going to be service members. We can't do the exercise without the public's help. Uh, things that we look for uh, from that perspective is we look for people that are willing to be a role player. The colonel, with this guy behind him, puppeting him, says, no, we're not going to be in the town. RMTs are training that is conducted off of the federal reservation. It's done on private property. And how will we know that it's Special military officer in town to be trained, or will we know? 
Is, is this going to be covert? Total, total, total? Well, a lot of it, Your Honor, is going to take place on private land or private property. Oh, so that's going to really negate out a lot of that. But if somebody's trans um, and they may be driving civilian vehicles uh, throughout the area. So really, within the city limits, if you notice my guys, they're probably really doing something wrong. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. We should call it the lies of Jade Helm. But suppose it should come up, who has the supreme voice? You? It's the community. It is the community, sir. So if you guys tell us, hey, we have something going on and we don't, we don't need you guys or we don't want you guys. Sir, it's truly an invitation. Uh, my name is Casey DeClue and my question is more opposed towards the commissioner's board. Um, as citizens, since we are so disturbed by this training, is there anything that we can do to reverse this decision? Or, you know, exp We should be able to. I mean, <laughs> can, we, can we vote? vote. <laughs> do we need to protest? What can we do to have our voices heard? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Blue, your voices have been heard today, yeah. and we thank you for that. Um, yeah, uh, I can't say what the court would do about it.